Yes, you are watching me unironically utilize night vision mode on this wrist-mounted Fortrex 901 GPS with ballistic calculator from Garmin, and as I do it, I find myself feeling more prepared than I was yesterday, while also experiencing more fun than I can keep to myself, hence this video. It's not all fun and games though, as I'll soon be disclosing to you exactly what transpired which led me to being sent the $600 Garmin 901 at no additional cost when I originally had ordered the $250 Garmin 801 that had one glaring issue which was intense enough to warrant the free upgrade. Ultimately, I feel like both of these new releases, the 801 and 901, are more than worthy of a purchase, especially if you are someone like me who has had a fascination with land navigation while hardly ever having the opportunity to learn about it to a satisfactory degree in a hands-on fashion due to the risks of getting lost in the woods after some small error in the field with a map and compass. That fear has always kept me from experiencing the woods quite literally as deeply as I always have wanted. Not anymore with this awesome preparedness tool and very real safety net which allows me to accomplish one of those small dreams I've had since childhood, to safely learn land navigation. So why exactly has it taken me to this point to finally begin my more serious land nav training? Besides the time being right with my personal fitness goals being crushed, which I deemed issue number one that needed addressed while happening to align with the release of these helpful products from Garmin, I must admit that I was a bit intimidated by the technology that we see on display here. Some may only see a simple GPS device on my wrist, but I knew that if I wanted to learn this to a high standard, it would be somewhat similar to ham radio in terms of having to essentially learn a new language and skill within itself. Ask yourself, do you know the differences between a course, a route, and a track? To the inexperienced, these terms may all seem like the same thing, but in the Garmin language, they each have their own meaning and set of menus to navigate. You'll also be benefited by learning about GPX files when working with any GPS unit, as well as applications and programs such as Basecamp, Express, CalTopo, Explore, Connect, and more. All of this while keeping your map and compass skills prioritized with the knowledge that the assistance of a GPS device is most wisely only regarded as supplementary to more primitive means of navigation or for use in an emergency and recreation for the fun of it. Speaking on map and compass navigation and keeping that skill prioritized while owning a unit such as the 901, I see a perfect philosophy of use of the 901 as being a training aid relative to the use of a map and compass. It's a fine means of checking your work. Use your map and compass to plot your points, find your azimuth, determine your distance to travel, etc., and just periodically check the GPS to confirm that all is well. Knowing additionally that you have it literally on hand in case of an error, turning a potential emergency into a simple yet powerful learning experience. I've found through my research about these devices that most users just implement them on man-made trails, telling them which pre-made path is the one that they had intentions to travel down during their planning process at home. What I'm speaking on is the use of these devices in that sense, but also for travel off of the beaten path. Let's delve deeper into one of the great features of the Fortrex series of products from Garmin, as well as a tip from me, which exactly relates to my previous points about using the tool as an emergency backup when adventuring off the beaten path. I highly recommend that at the beginning of a new day of exploration, you clear your current track therefore beginning a new one at your start location, as well as dropping a waypoint which you clearly label as your start. A track is essentially a breadcrumb record that the device automatically logs upon being powered on. Clearing the current track before beginning your trip is important because it lets you control where the new track starts, which in this case will be the exact point that you'll ultimately want to be returning to. In the case that you get lost, the Fortrex has a trackback feature which allows you to follow this breadcrumb trail all the way back to your start point step by step. You can also save the track for later use in the area. 
by dropping the customized waypoints at the same time as starting your new track, you have now created a second means of navigation back to your start point in case of emergency. The waypoint works by providing you with a direct line path to the exact coordinate that you placed it, as opposed to the track which will take you exactly the same way back as you came in. Don't forget to drop more waypoints along your way, identifying helpful locations or noteworthy observations too. Fortunately, at least with these newer Fortrex models, the review, creation, and storage of your tracks, routes, waypoints, collections, maps, and courses has never been easier. It used to be mandatory to connect your device to a computer in order to take advantage of these settings, but the Garmin Explore iOS and Android app now lets you manage these features all in one bit of software on your phone, leaving the choice to you whether you want to use outside programs as helpful backup tools for when you need a little more detail creating a new course on a specific map, etc. As the satellite view on downloaded Garmin Explore maps does admittedly leave some to be desired. On the plus side, these downloaded maps of your area can be used offline and without cell service. From there, you can design a new course with its own custom paths and waypoints or follow an existing common path where the software will automatically snap your course onto the path and follow its curves and turns. Another great detail about this setup is that you can create such a course on the app copy it as a track, and share it to your Garmin wearable, even while in the field and without any connection other than Bluetooth. You better like the app and its maps too, because they are the only maps that you get with this device. That's right, maps aren't stored on the Fortrex units themselves, so it's highly advised that you either have a physical map with you, which again you should anyway, and or have the downloaded map for your area in the Explore app, which is thankfully an easy process and works essentially the same as having a device with a built-in map once you set it up, especially considering that the Explore app does show your current location on the map as well, so long as it has a satellite signal. I can imagine a time when your phone won't have a GPS lock, but your Fortrex will though, as the Fortrex can communicate with more satellites than your phone does, which is worth taking note of. Definitely enable this feature on your device once you receive it. For those who prefer relying solely on an electronic device for their navigation and who don't favor the ability to navigate covertly, I'd recommend purchasing one of the Garmin eTrex models, likely the 32X. That unit has built-in maps for you to view straight from the device, but unfortunately does not have a night vision function and is more purpose-built for daytime navigation, where you can use your hand to frequently hold the unit in front of you. In fact, the bright screens on these devices are often explicitly marketed as a positive for how bright they are. I feel as though the night vision capability of the Fortrex line will certainly come in handy for you as a prepared citizen even if you don't have night vision though as the mode's dim setting allows for superior dummy-proof light discipline during possible low-light navigating after an emergency has occurred and you're moving from one location to another with stealth. Another interesting feature in this regard is the device's capability to connect with your phone and allow you to read notifications all the while remaining in night vision mode and not having to engage with your phone to read any important messages. I do like the thought of not needing to turn my phone's screen on while working with this setup, yet still having the ability to, to see what is going on. Did you notice earlier how I mentioned that you have to copy your saved course as a track in order to transfer it to your phone? This brings us to one of the more noteworthy negatives of the 901 and 801, which is that they don't store any courses. This is also the exact cause for Garmin sending me the 901 as a courtesy replacement of my original 801. You see, Garmin's website explicitly advertises these new Fortrex models as having not only the ability to store courses, but to store a staggering 500 of them. Now, I'm not in need of that many courses, as I'm sure the 100 tracks and 50 storage slots for routes 
will be more than enough for me considering careful organization, but I did bring this discrepancy to Garmin's attention, to which their response was to compensate me with the 901 for discovering the error and showing a slight amount of reasonable distress considering that I never find the extra security of having the 500 courses as a negative, and I did at least expect them due to the advertising. It's worth keeping this in mind, though, in, in the case that you're considering the purchase for yourself. Having the ability to design these navigable tracks and routes while either at home, on your computer, or even on your phone through the Explore app is additionally beneficial when considering the fact that, depending on which emergency scenario we are referring to, this option allows you to leave your phone behind and still keep the stored data on your Garmin for use in the field. This would be of use during times when you don't want to be tracked by having your phone with you while navigating. This is also a perfect example of a time when owning a physical map would be of vital importance. Not only this, but if you are so paranoid, rejoice in knowing that the Garmin does have a self-destruct mode where it will erase all of its stored data within a few presses of a button. These situations are quite dramatic and unlikely, though, and that's where I'd just like to mention how not every SHTF event necessarily requires a situation where you are trying to avoid being electronically tracked, or even more commonly touted as a dramatic SHTF event, a downed grid to exist. Many people claim that GPS serves little use during SHTF because the grid will inevitably be down. This is frankly an unlikely situation at best, and absolutely not a requirement for an emergency to occur, though I do commend people for taking it into consideration. I'm simply arguing that it's better to have than not. Even while acknowledging that their statement does have some truth, as if it did happen to become a reality, then eventually there would be a loss of satellite position and capability, but even so, it would be gradual and over time. In other words, these devices may very likely work for some time after that grid down situation has started, and I'd argue that these beginning times would be the most important moments to have the technology. In conclusion, these devices are tools that come with a steep learning curve but have many benefits for the experienced end user. It must be kept in mind that they have real recreational value as well. I can't wait for my next adventure with this technology where I'll bring my dog along with some snacks and we will explore a new area, blurring the lines between prepping and recreating. If you don't feel the need for a GPS, then more power to you. I see them as handy tools and fun toys at the end of the day, and for that I am very appreciative. If you are appreciative of this video, then please do feel free to subscribe, share, comment, thumbs up, or even financially contribute via paypal.me slash don't do daylight. Thank you very much, my friend, and always remember, don't have a good day, have a good night. Before I go, ladies and gentlemen, I just thought of another great use that I'm going to have for this product in the near future. This is going to be during a coyote hunt. Now, I find myself often at my coyote hunting stands where I will hear coyotes off in the distance and they're hanging up off into the woods, maybe beyond a couple of hills or just off out more than I'm comfortable going into the woods on my own at this moment in an unfamiliar area. With this Garmin 901, I'll be able to walk and trace my steps using that breadcrumb tracking feature. And if I do get lost or just want an easy way back, I'll be able to just use that track back feature to find my way back to the original stand or to my parking location. That will be kind of revolutionary. So now if I have any coyotes hanging up far off into the, the woods, I'll be able to maybe get a little bit closer without worrying about finding my way back. That is going to be super cool. Okay, I'm done now. Thank you very much.